Hello YouTube, my name is Paul Kroon and I'm going to be your host today. Today I want to talk about load performance in Power Apps. Basically this means the time to, it takes to start your app for the user to use it. This was really a challenge at a customer with a mobile app where I had to read in a large data set on the start of my app. This start time was around 8 to 10 seconds. So I was looking for ways to decrease the time. A big help was the video of Mr. Deng from the Power Apps team on using a toggle control to trigger formulas and collect my data. And I extended on these solutions and that really upgraded my app. So let's go to Power Apps so I can show you what I did to upgrade the performance. And uh, what you see is a demo app with on the left side a slow solution and on the right side I built a faster and better solution. Let's run this demo by clicking this button start collection and look at the timers. So the right side is done already and the left side takes five seconds. And then knowing that I'm a browser with a very uh, fast internet speed and I collect a small data set. So when I would take in a large data set on a mobile phone with a bad connection, it would maybe me take 10 seconds or maybe 12 or 15. Uh, too long for the customer to wait. Let's do this again and see what happens. Oh, the right side is done already and the left side takes three seconds. So I think the performance will be three, four times faster with building a solution like on the right side. Now, how does the solution work? Now, on both solutions are triggered based on Mr. Deng's ID. And uh, what's the idea is that you make a toggle control, you connect this toggle control with a default value to a global variable, and then when you set the global variable to true, you kind of trigger the toggle control. What's nice about a token control is that you can trigger the global variable, so the token control from everywhere in your app. So that's step one in both solutions. Step two, on the left, it starts collecting the data. And on the right, it will only trigger the icon control you see under the toggle. So I have six controls under the toggle which are triggered by this toggle control. And we do that in step two. And in step two, the collection on the slow way is started. Then step three, uh, left is properly now busy with collecting the first data set. And when it's done, it's gonna go to the second, gonna uh, collect there the data, and put it in a collection and after that's done they kind of go to the third and then it's going to go to the fifth to the sixth etc but on the right all the buttons are triggered so it's going to collect all the six collections at the same time so there are going at the same time six requests to flow and ask flow to collect data from my SQL server and give it back. And they do it separately of each other. So in the left solutions, the time of the total uh, collection of my data is depending on the time combined from all my collections, eh, all my requests. And on the right side, the time is equal to the collect or the response which takes the longest. So they don't have to wait after each other. Okay, I think you want to know how I build this and how you can build it yourself. Now, first, let's look at the onStart parameter. With the onStart parameter, I basically set some global variables. So. I make the app started variable and the start parallel variable and I can do some more variables if needed. 
but for the rest I don't do nothing in the on start parameter. Then when the app gets visible, I check for the app started if it's false or right. And when it's false, then the app isn't started yet, or it's never run a disk block of code. And you can, it's going to set the start parable variable to true. And then it's going to set the app starter to true. So this means that when it's set to true, the whole time the app is used, this block is never going to run again. So it's going to run just one time. So, so basically I'm going to run this block only for my static collection of my data. What I can do further is go further and for example, set start my dynamic data collection to true. And this will run every time the screen is visible so I can do the same for my dynamic data and be able to update this data every time I come to the screen. But this block will never run. Okay, let's now look at the start collection button. On this, I just say I want to set the start linear to true and set the start parallel to true. So even when the second one is faster, I first set the first global to the toggle bar. So the linear starts approximately maybe one millisecond earlier than the fast collection. Now look at the toggle control and we go to the right to the default it start to set to start linear so i set with a start collection this to true and this will trigger our toggle and with the other one i start the parallel toggle now the difference is on the on check parameter now the first line is just to start my timer the uh, last two lines are to stop my timer and to reset my toggle bar. But here is the code block which does the collection. So here you see six lines and the lines runs after each other. Linear. So the total time of this block is the time you need to collect all your data in local collections. The difference in the other toggle bar is that I don't collect my data set. I just select the six items beneath the toggle bar. And what select basically does is that it says to the control you're selecting, start the unselect statement, formulas, parameter uh, you have in you. And if there is a formula, run that formula without using a cursor to click the control and then when we look at the controls the control basically does one thing only collect one collection and because this sequence to collect a icon is very fast all these six icons will run simultaneously and do their own collection and store that in a local collection so that's why only the one who is the longest, that's the one we have to wait on. So this is how to optimize your load performance in your app by uh, basically say we have a trigger with a global variable, but we uh, make a button for each collection we want to make. So we kind of, uh, cut or solution in very much small parts. So I hope you like this. And if you do so, please like and subscribe to my channel. And I hope to see you in my next videos. Uh, thank you for watching.